Hello and welcome to the first Stars and Scrums of 2023. We are almost starting the new international season as the men's and women's rugby Europe Championship are due to start in February, while the women's trophy competition will resume also this month as some other divisions. For 2023, the men's rugby Europe Championship will debut a new format, expanding the tournament from six to eight teams as Belgium, Poland and Germany join Georgia, Romania, Portugal, Spain and Netherlands playing the competition throughout February and March to decide the 20, uh, 2023 champion. I'm Francisco Isaac, your host, and today with me, I have a very special set of guests. Mr. Philippe Tuccelli, Rabi Europe's head of competitions, who, is co who come here not only just to explain the new format, but what we seek on the future. Mr. Moritz Botha, former England international and new line, line out coach for Belgium. And finally, Hinkley Valvasa, the Romanian back who played a big part for the Oaks to get to the Rabi World Cup and who is already with so much eager in some, in, inside him to try to get the title of the Rabi Euro Championship. So welcome all, and let's start our preview of the new format. The first question is going to the head of the, of the competition, Mr. Philip. So new format, uh, we're going to have a pool stage, then elimination round. Why have we come to it? What is the rationale behind the change? Well, Francisco and, and Hinkley Woods, um, thanks for inviting me. I'm very happy to, to be there first. Um, it's an excellent question, Francisco. Um, clearly, uh, what we wanted to achieve is really to, to change the format, to revive the format, to increase, uh, let's say, the, the interest of the competition. And this is, has not come from yesterday. This comes from a decision of our board of directors back in 2020, so just before COVID. And uh, there was a clear assessment that um, the participating teams wanted to expand and wanted to bring more high-level rugby to new territories. Mm -hmm. And that was shared with all the participating teams, that was shared amongst the board of directors. And the decision was taken at that time. And it was also decided to not expand it during the Rugby World Cup qualifying cycle because it was a bit too sensitive to introduce a new format while the teams would be all looking to qualify. And it was decided to implement it here during this 23 season. So it all comes from a 2020 decision. And um, we want really to, to improve. It doesn't come just because we wanted to change. Uh, there are three main reasons, uh, Francisco. Uh, the first one is that we need to expand the base, we need a stronger base, but uh, Spain, Georgia, Portugal, uh, Romania, of course, they are they are rugby stronghold as well, but you have as well Belgium, you have the Netherlands, and now we welcome uh, Poland and Germany, we welcome them back. Um, we, we really believe that if we have a stronger base, uh, the peak of performance will be higher. The more they compete with each other, the more they can peak and, and hopefully perform um, at the World Cup level. So this is why we wanted to expand that base. Um, also, we wanted to do um, to help those teams to do better outside of the pitch. So by bringing Poland, let's say, at the top level, we will help Poland to not only structure the national team, but to structure its union, to structure its national championship, and in return to create more playing opportunities for the players, hopefully, the Polish Championship will one day turn semi-professional. So we want to reach more territories, create more opportunities. And this is valid for the pitch and also outside of the pitch for commercial opportunities. By bringing some new countries, we want to expand, we want to tap into new markets, for instance, the German market, uh, which is very strong. Uh, but we also know that Poland, uh, they are fond of team sports. You know, they, they excel in volleyball, they excel in basketball. Why not in rugby in the future? We know that the, the Polish fans, they love to cheer for their, for their team. So all those reasons uh, led us to expand, to have that expansion. And I will just conclude that's a very interesting semi-final and final phase as well, I believe. Uh, that would spice up a bit the competition. And until the last day, uh, you will fight to be fifth, to be sixth, to be third. And uh, we think that would bring more, more spice to the competition. Quick question. How do you see the evolution of the tournament going forward? Uh, well, um, it's a good question. I think we've seen it was very close last year. I mean, 
four teams were really, really close. So the first year of the expansion, I would say maybe we'll have some uneven matches. We can expect that at the first year. But very quickly, uh, I can see that the teams will, will, uh, will level up, uh, will really get better. And I think it will be even more challenging in the years to come. Uh, and I see those finals as well. The, the objective is to market those finals. So I can see some good interest around those finals. Our ambition is to create a super Sunday and to play all the matches of the final on the Sunday. Okay, so here we have a new bit of details from the competition. Now going to Mr. Valvasa. The new format adds more pressure as now there's the need to qualify for a semi-final to be on track to win the, the title. Good for the tournament and for the players? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you guys for, for having me on the cast. Uh, the pleasure is all mine. Uh, good question. Um, uh, yeah, the format, the, the new format uh, is very exciting. Um, I think, like Philip, uh, Philippe said, uh, it brings a lot of spice into, you know, the pool games and, and, and the semi-final and final coming up. You know, it's equivalent to, um, you know, playing pool games just as as high as the, the, the World Rugby game. So, yeah, I think it's a, it's a good opportunity. Good opportunity. And how is Romania working at the moment with the focus for the rec? Because until last season, it was five games, so you had to play to win at least four to be on the on the title run. But this time, it's a bit different. You can still lose at the pool stage and still qualify for the semifinals with a bit of luck. But then it's like uh, do or die time. So how are you preparing for the, those moments? Thank you for the question. Um... Yeah, at the moment, uh, the, the the Romanian team uh, are in camp, and um, you know the boys are slowly starting to gel together. You know, um, getting the rhythm on, um, and just you know preparing for for this week's game. You know, we have Poland this week, and um, I'm pretty sure Poland will uh, bring a good fight, and you know, such as every other team. And yeah, so boys are training well, and and we'll take uh, each game as it comes. Okay, I'll go back to you because you have a new coaching setup behind the remaining team. Mr. Moritz Botha, uh, you are now with the Belgium squad since this year, uh, accompanying Mike Ford to the, to the staff. Um, you were with Germany some years ago. Uh, it was a different format, now this yeah. one. So what do you think of this and what, what we as fans can expect from Belgium this season? Um, it's uh, definitely an uh, interesting new format um you know there's something to play for um for, for, for all the teams um like like you said earlier um even if you're going to be you know if you don't win your first two matches it's still uh, you know you, you want to finish one higher than, than the team you're playing against so there's definitely something to fight for right until the end um it's yeah what you can expect from belgium um <laughs> We, we've we've well had very little time um well we'll have very little time together but um you know we want to obviously bring some organization into, into into the team a little bit of structure but you know we want the players to be motivated and and, and play for each other and, and 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 fight for each other um you know hopefully that can be our point of difference um like i said we've got very little time together so um we've got to motivate them and uh, you know give them a plan to to play to uh, just a question about the format. You, do you think you have travel, uh, traveled a bit? You played at the, the highest possible <clears> level uh, as a professional player. You went to coach G Germany and so on. Do you think this is the format that can help teams develop, develop more strongly? How good uh, and how good does it feel to be back on the championship on the personal note? Um, I feel it's, it's brilliant to be back. Um, you know, I, I experienced it with, with Germany um back in 2018 um and that was that was a that was a great experience 2019 um great experience and, and, and a bit of an eye-opener um we played belgium first first up and and then i think belgium was the lowest ranked team in in the tournament and you know we were shocked and, and surprised by the passion um that, that they brought and 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 the, and the fact physicality that they brought so um definitely an eye-opener to um to the tournament and the standards of the tournament um and 
Portugal, I think, will be a really good example um, of how they have developed over the last few years, four years, um, into qualifying for, for the World Cup. Um, and, um, you know, they would not have done that if they haven't played against Georgia, Romania, Russia, um, all, all, all these top teams um, for the last for the last three years. They wouldn't have qualified. So those two years of playing against top teams and then, and then you know, developing the, the structure around it and, and, and the depth in the team gave an opportunity to qualify. And, you know, uh, Belgium, Germany and Poland coming in, that'll give them the same opportunity to to develop, um, you know, not just the first team, but also the structure um, in in their countries. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's something for young players to aspire to now, to, to play for, for Poland, to, to play for Belgium, or to play for Germany, to play against Georgia and um, against Romania and, 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 and Spain, against all these top teams and Portugal. Um, you know, it, it, it's all of a sudden it's become a, a much bigger... Well, tournament and, and, and these new, th well, say three teams that's now joined the competition, um, you know, they, they'll have nations to inspire. Um, and I, I think we'll definitely, you know, all the teams want to do well and they want to make their countries proud. And uh, it's, it's a much bigger stage now. So it's, uh, it's, it's really exciting. Okay. So I'll go back to you to ask. What is your duty as a line-out and forwards coach so the people at home can understand a bit more? Philippe, back to you. Three nations from Europe are going to be in the World Cup 2023. Is this proof of how competitive the tournament has become? And what part of the Rugby Europe Super Cup contributed to this, in your opinion? You mentioned in a recent interview that Patrice Lajeske was mm -hmm. happy with it from a performance perspective. Yes, Francisco, thanks for, for that question. Uh, I think I mean, we are very happy to have three sides that qualify to the World Cup. And, and if you look at it a bit closer, we have the Six Nations, uh, you have the, the Rugby Championship, and then you, you, have the, you have the Rugby Rob Championship with three teams uh, that qualified. So we are the, the third most important annual rugby competition at the end, uh, thanks to this qualification. And um, yes, we're also working with the Super Cup uh, with the, the franchise competition. Mm -hmm. And indeed, this is what Patrice Lagiske said recently, and, and he, told, he told us several times, thanks to the Lusitanos franchise, they have been able to build that depth. Maurice was, was speaking about the depth of the squad, and they were able to build that depth, uh, to build consistency, to build training habits, and high-level training habits, I would say. And this is how, at the end, you know, it's, it's detail. High level, it's based on detail. And, and this is how they, they nailed on USA in Dubai. So, so I think we're helping uh, through the Super Cup, uh, the same as this eight-team competition will, will help in the future. Uh, I'm very uh, convinced of that. And uh, don't forget that we have three teams that qualified, but four we are really at the same level uh, with Spain. We should not forget Spain. Yeah. Um, Spain is uh, um, undergoing a big restructuring of the federation. I think maybe this year they'll be a, a bit young because it's a younger team that, that's lined up for this for this uh, edition. But I think they will be better and stronger in the next years. Our ambition is to bring not only those four teams, but the four next uh, with, with, with Belgium. Uh, with, with Netherlands, uh, with Poland, and, and why not Germany, uh, to bring those four, you know, to that level and make sure that we don't have only four teams that can qualify, but maybe in four years to have those eight teams that can pretend, you know, starting the, the wreck, uh, that can could pretend uh, for a qualification quota to the World Cup. So, yes, we're already focused on that ambition. Um, Mr. Van Vasse, I, we all love an origin story. Tell us a bit about how you got involved in the Romanian setup. How did you call? How did the call come up about? Uh, what were your fl feelings when you he heard for the first time your name in, in the Romanian setup? Um, so I think in um, 2017, I think I was 17, just about turning 18. You know, came uh, flew over to Romania, not knowing anything about the country. You know, I got um, a contract to play here for one of the club teams here. And um, I just came to play for one year. I was signed for one year. And then the years went by, I made it two. And then third and fourth, um, 
the federation spoke to me and was like um, that I could be eligible to play for uh, Romania at the end of the year. So I told him I'll have a think about it. Um, spoke to one of the my good friends in our team now who we qualified together, uh, qualified together. Um, and yeah, the decision was a bit easy. Uh, thought I'd give back to, to the country because it was the first um, professional contract they, they gave me. So the, yeah, it was, it was in at the end of the year, they, they called me up to the camp um, and I got to debut against uh, Uruguay in Italy and came away with the win. So from then on, uh, it's been a it's been an honour and a privilege to be able to put on the, the yellow and um, white jersey and yeah, it's just history from there. What does Romania mean to you and how, and how proud are you to be involved with them? It means a lot, you know. Like I said before, um, you know, whenever I put that jersey on, it's I play for my my, my team and for the small nation of, of Romania. So yeah, it means a lot. Yeah. Um, in 2022, you played a big part for Romania to finish so so well in the Radio Europe Championship. You do you have a personal best memory from that from the last season? The last season. Um, Probably qualifying and probably um, being able to play against my, my birth country, which was just at the end of last year, um, mm -hmm. a Samoa, uh, even though we didn't get the result we wanted, but it was always good to, um, you know, rub shoulders with the <laughs> Samoan team. So, yeah, it was good. And for this season, what is your personal goal? Personal goal um, is just to, you know, just focus on the wreck at the moment, um, like I've spoken uh, spoke before, uh, get... Um, you know, the winning and hopefully make the semi-final and, and final for the rec. And then the preparation for the World Cup is the main goal. Okay, yeah. the main goal is for the Arabian World Cup, but the rec <laughs> comes first, as Mr. Valva said. Mr. Valva, explain now to us, what is your duties? What are your role inside the Belgium camp? So people at home can understand a bit more. Um. Well, first and foremost, it'd be uh, around the line out, um, working with the team to come up with the with the, with the best calls and, and and what formations we want to use and options we want to use against the teams we're playing against, um, mm -hmm. and then obviously trying to give the the backs a good platform or you know and um, develop develop a good mall um, for the team. It's it's always been a um, a strength of Belgium, um, and you know hopefully we can we can build on that. Um, and after that, sort of, you know, everything else around around forward play, um, apart from the scrums, um, sort of defense defensive work around around um, forward play, you know, around the breakdown uh, breakdowns as well, attacking breakdowns, defensive breakdowns. Um, but yeah, main role, well, main objective is, is around the lineup and, and around the mall and, and mall defense. Um, it's you know it's a, it's a it's a weapon in rugby and teams all the, well good teams have, have, have really good malls and good mall defenses so it's, a, it's definitely something that we'll be we'll be uh, investing a bit of time in. How did you find the Belgium uh, pack? At, I know you have little had little time to work with them, but how did you find them? What what was the spirit? And if the players are open to new knowledge and new info. Yeah, they um they they've been very receptive. Um, uh, me coming in and, and making some changes. Um, you know that's 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 always always good to to work with a team or players that, that are open to change, um, open to different ways of doing things. Um, and you know I've spoken to quite a few senior players, and they're all like, you know, if you think it's what we that what we want we should do or what you want to do, then please then then let's do it. Um, so it's nice to have the backing uh, from from the senior players on, on that, and then um, you know hopefully it's uh, it'll work really well, and all the all the all the players will buy into it, and, and we'll, we'll be able to to um, execute well. In your team, you have a series of youngsters. We have seen them play in the European uh, youth competitions, uh, under 18s and under 20s, um, and the Brussels Devils, all co of course, the Super Cup play the major role. Do, why, how do you find the future for, of the team? I know you played against them when you were coaching Germany. Now we, you are with them. So how do you see the, the future or 
the ground base of this Belgium uh, setup? Um, I think it's very exciting. Like Felipe said earlier about um, the, the, the Super Cup, um, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for, for countries to develop depth in, in, in their game and their squad. Um, you know, a lot of the countries that play in the, in, in, in the REC, um, their top players play in other countries, um, probably mainly France. Um, so it's a, it's a great opportunity for, 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 for Belgium to, to develop uh, their playing squad and, and, and the depth in the playing squad, um, you know, and yeah, probably a lot of other countries have the same problem of, of getting players released for tournaments. Um, <laughs> it, 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 with the Super Cup, it helps you develop that depth and, you know, the quality of player that at some stage you're not going to need them. You're not going to want the players to be released because you, you've already got a, a really good squad that, that, you, that you're coaching in, in the country that's playing in the, in the local leagues mm -hmm. through, the, through the Super Cup. So it's, um, yeah, it's, there's a lot of good talent coming through. And like I said, the Super Cup is uh, one competition that, 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 you know, they're developing. But, um, yeah, hopefully over the next few seasons we'll, we'll see a lot more young talent coming through. That's a good answer. Um, in, in this Sunday clash, um, when you when you were your team drawing a new format, uh, like you said some years ago, um, what was your feeling about the Super Sunday uh, for, uh, for the Rabi Europe Championship? I mean, well. Um... I think it's I mean, several feelings. To start, uh, we, we never played with knockout matches. Uh, there was just round robin. So just moving from a, a, a round robin to a knock, knockout phase, it's already a big change. Uh, and then, yes, how to build excitement. We, we just had a brainstorming, um, I think, at the office and with the board, board members. Um, we need to create a product. And, and I mean, also Six Nations are, are, have shown that was possible uh, with the, the, the Super Saturday. So why don't we use the Sunday uh, at our advantage? And you will have one match after the, the other. You will have the seventh place final match. You have the fifth place final match. You have the third place final match and the championship match uh, around the, in the evening, around 8 p.m. Uh, that will conclude the event. We believe is the best way to, to conclude a tournament here. OK, so and now going to, to the coach, Mr. Botha. You played in Six Nations, you were a part of the England camp and so on. So to have a Super Sunday, um, do you think this is the right uh, course for the competition? It's, it certainly makes it a lot more exciting, um, you know, for, 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 um, for, the, for the fans to watch it. Um, you know, it's, uh, if you're a fan of the tournament or if you're a fan of, of, of a country, it's, it's, it's always nice to sit down and, you know, you can, you can watch all the games in a row um and yeah like so it's, it's, it's something to play for up until the last day for all the teams um so even if your your team is playing in, in the first uh super sunday game then there's a position to play for um so it definitely makes it more exciting for for, for all the all the spectators what uh, uh, for belgium what would be the the goal for this season <clears throat> Um, I think uh, sixth place would would be uh, a, a, a good a good um, achievement for us. Um, so if we can, you know, the, the first three games are are tough games. You know, we play Portugal, we play Romania, and then we play Poland. Um, you know, if we can win one of those three games, then um, I think we should possibly play. Um, uh, well, in, in a playoff for, 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 for sixth place. So um, that, that would be the target. It's a good target for the season. Uh, and what, what can we expect from the type of gameplay from Belgium? It's going to be a quick uh, type of tempo. It's going to be more physical and with the, the pack playing a bigger role. Can you give us a nitpick of, of what it's going to be? Um, like so we, we've, we've had, say, we're going to have very little time with the team. So... Mm -hmm. um, it, there won't be much change, um, you know, to, to the traditional way, way that Belgium, Belgium play. Um, and you also don't want to change uh, an identity of a nation. Um, you know, Portugal have always thrown the ball around and, and play exciting brand of rugby. 
um, whereas Belgium has, you know, always had, you know, a good strong wall. Um, so we don't, you want to, don't want to change the identity of a team, um, but you want to find areas that you can improve and, you know, make the team better as a whole. Um, and, you know, hopefully we can add a bit of a, a detail and a bit of, bit of, bit of, um, planning around certain areas that, that we can possibly exploit better. But, um, I think it will be probably straight up traditional Belgium rugby um with a, a solid a solid base up front hopefully okay so now you the the fans who are watching our show can understand a bit more what we can expect of belgium in 2023 for mr valvas andy robson left after doing a good job and now it's the moment for eugene eugen apjok um what can you tell us about the new coach it's it's the game plan the same are going to see the same rough uh but quick romania what can you tell us about your your team um yeah so i've just come into camp um today uh haven't um really started working um but yeah abjork has done he's coached one of the clubs here in romania um and he's done a real good job um with the team uh, they've won the championship here in romania uh three years in a row so yeah um the rugby league is expected from romania we'll probably uh you know stick to the basics um what we what we know um we've got a young squad um um coming in uh, with a few experienced players um but yeah just a strong uh, a bit faster and, and uh, a tougher brand of rugby uh, romania will, will bring bring to the table so yeah very looking forward to it and excited um, Bucharest all, all, uh, all always offers to the fans at home and to the teams that come there uh, like a fired up uh, ambience. So, uh, what do you think it means for the fans for Romania to be on the World Cup and to be a title contender for the 2023 Radio Europe Championship? Uh, how I, I don't like the word crazy because people tend to take it to somewhere else, but mm -hmm. how fired up are those fans at home? um i think they've they've they're excited uh just as as much as we are you know uh romania's got a big support um uh, behind them um you guys seen it uh within the home games that we've had um you know they're very loyal and and pr uh, proud supporters so yeah um i think they're very very excited and, and very happy they will be able to uh represent the little nation of uh, a romanian world cup so yeah thank you so now just for the final round of questions Philip, what would be your goals for this season? What do you expect to see from the fans, the fans at home, from the broadcasting, from the teams that are playing, and for the competition? Uh, good question, Francisco. Well, I mean, that's the first year of the new formula. So, of course, we want to have a success overall. Uh, but we want to see those new teams um, seizing the opportunities. Um, we, we want them showing that they deserve to be there. I think that's the most important. Uh, and we want also to, to, to manage to have a success for the final day. I think that's important. We want to show that we can organize four matches over one day with a good TV product, because from this year we are centralizing the TV production. So it's Rugby Europe controlling the TV production. And that's also important to raise the standard. Before, we could have an excellent production in one territory and a poor production in another territory. So we want to offer a better fan experience overall. Uh, that's important to us. And, and I would say the last bit and the last objective is that the teams that are qualified, like Romania is qualified, um, we hope that they use this year REC as a perfect rehearsal for the World Cup. So we wish them, of course, the best of luck. And, uh, and to do the best for, for this edition and, of course, to perform well at the World Cup in France in, in a few months. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hinkelvar Vasa, um, a, a word to fans at home from you and from the camp. Um, just a word of... Um, just thanks to the, to the fans of Romania uh, for sticking by us throughout the, you know, the hard times and, and, and the good times. And... Um, yeah, I th I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, the team and the, and the Romanian uh, national team will, will bring a lot of spice and a lot of fire within the, the rec and the preparation for the World Cup. So, yeah, stick with us and uh, 
will be will be good. So and let's the spice from Valva to Mr. Valvasa, it's the offloading game, which is beautiful to see it in the Review World Championship. Uh Mr. Botha, from your coaching role, what would you want to say to the Belgian fans and the rec fans at home? Um I remember clearly when we played when I when I was um coaching with Germany, we played against Belgium in our first game. Um and they don't play the same stadium anymore, but it was a quite a muddy pitch. Um, quite a small stadium, but it was the atmosphere was incredible. Um, so if we can have an atmosphere like that for every game, every home game, that you know it really lifts a team. Um, so come along, make a lot of noise, get behind the team, and uh, yeah, hopefully get us uh, performing better than 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 what we what we would do without you. Okay, so I thank my big thank you for uh, for all three of you for coming to, for the show. So for the first fixture that start of the Rugby Europe Champions, it starts this weekend. At the fourth of February, we have two games. So at local time, Romania is going to play against Poland. So Mr. Balvasa will be. We hope to be. He's going to be included in the in the setup. Then at uh, seven uh, UTC time. Portugal is going to play against Belgium, so it's going to be one of the biggest games of the round. And then on the on the Sunday, Georgia plays against Germany, nine uh, UTC time, so 1 p.m. at your in, in Tbilisi. And then to finish round one, uh, we have Spain against Netherlands. It will be at uh, 15 to one in Spain. So. You can watch all of it in the Review Europe TV, or if you are, for example, in Portugal, you have to see in Sport TV. In other countries, you have your broadcasters. You can see all the information on our website, who says all the fixtures, all the broadcasters, and the players that you have to get your attention on. So thank you for Mr. F uh, Philippe Tuchelli for coming here, Mr. Moritz Botha and Mr. Hinkley Valvasa. We'll see you on the pitch this season. And... I say thank you and now a wave of goodbye to the fans at home. So goodbye and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank Francisco. You. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.